first of all, I just want to say congratulations. I mean, you must be walking on air. Your first novel, it is a phenomenon. I mean, that's an overused word, but I think in this case, not at all. Hugely successful. A friend of mine said she went on vacation recently. Everyone she saw was reading The Help on the Beach. Um, tell me how you're feeling about this extraordinary success. Um, I think the truest word I can use is surprised. I, I had no idea. You know, it's, I started writing The Help, um, gosh, right after 9-11. Um, really out of homesickness more than anything. I just wanted to hear those voices, you know, from my past. I was living in New York City. I missed my family and my friends from Mississippi. And so I started writing in the voice of Dimitri, which was the African-American woman who had worked for our family, um, gosh, for 50 years. She started working for my great, great, great Aunt Carrie as a second cook. Uh -huh. And it was just such an incredible relationship because she went from Aunt Carrie then to my grandmother and then consequently, you know, raising my father, my uncle, and then all the grandkids. So she was such um, an important figure in our family. And I won't say, I won't use the phrase that I think is so overused and that is she was like part of the family because you know, therein lies the irony that is the relationships of blacks and whites in Mississippi. And, and, and in much of the South, especially during the period about which you write. Now, I was curious, how old are you, Catherine? Because you weren't born, I'm assuming, during the period of time your book is written. I am 40, and the book takes place, it, uh, it opens up in 1962. Right. So it was a little bit before, you know, my generation came along, but I have to tell you, not a whole lot changed in Mississippi from the 60s to the early 70s. It changed on the law books, for sure, but not a lot had changed in the kitchens of the white homes. And you, you know, so much of this book is about the uneasy, uh, complicated relationship. I think really it's between any sort of person who has someone who is subservient to them working in their homes. It's a strange intimacy, yet this very um, clear power structure. Well, then you add on to that, you know, the, um, the difficult and sort of unspoken rules of the South between blacks and whites, and then you throw it in, in the middle of, you know, the hotbed of the civil rights era, and it was a very complex time. And, you know, I was taught not to, to talk about it. You didn't talk about the differences be between blacks and whites and how we were treated in our relationships. You just left that alone. That was for the politicians. It was something that nice young ladies didn't discuss. Did you ever question it? I mean, obviously, one of your main protagonists, Skeeter, is a very sort of self-actualized, uh, socially conscious young woman who really evolves, I think, in her views of, of this relationship and of the times. And when you were younger, did you ever say, to your parents, you know, what's going on here, or was it just so mar much a part of the fabric of your life? You did just accept it. I never questioned any of it. And do, you re do you feel guilt about that in some ways? Um, I feel a, a little ashamed to admit that it wasn't until I was 30, you know, 30 years old, maybe 35, that I really started to question and think about for the first time in my life what Dimitri must have been thinking and feeling as she was taking care of our family. I never, it never occurred to me to wonder what she was thinking.